In order to write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form, we need to find two pieces of information. We first need to find the slope of the line, and then we need to find the y-intercept for that line. Step one is to find that slope. In problem number one, we need to problem solve a little bit. We need to create a line parallel to this line. Well, this is a line written in standard form. To convert a line in standard form to slope-intercept form, we need to solve for y. When we solve for y, we'll easily know the slope of this line. When I divide both sides by 4, this division bar really means distribute. I need to distribute my division over this plus sign. Negative 3 divided by 4 is negative 3 fourths x plus 9 divided by 4. So this is this equation written in slope-intercept form. So I know the slope of this line is negative three-fourths. Now if I want to create a line parallel, my new slope is going to be negative three-fourths. Step two, find the y-intercept. Now I have two methods to find this y-intercept. I'm going to use my method one. I'm going to use my slope point slope formula. The point slope formula requires the slope, which we found in step one, negative three-fourths, and an ordered pair for x1, y1. Well, here's my x1, y1. My new line has to go through this point, so this is the point that I want to plug in to my point slope formula. Now I need to solve for x. Distribute my negative three-fourths. A negative times a negative gives me a positive. Three-fourths times six gives me eighteen-fourths. Eighteen-fourths can be simplified. 18 and 4 are both divisible by 2, so if I divide 18 by 2, I get 9. And when I divide 4 by 2, I get 9, or I get 2. So 18 fourths in simplest terms is 9 halves. Last step to solve for y, I need to subtract 3 from both sides. Now I have positive 9 halves minus 3. I'm going to do this work off to the side. In order to subtract fractions, I need a common denominator. The common denominator between 2 and 1 is 2. So I'm going to keep 9 halves as 9 halves, and 3 over 1 becomes 6 over 2 because I'm going to multiply my numerator and my denominator by 2. To subtract fractions, I subtract my numerators and I keep my denominators the same. Think of fractions as terms. This bottom number is the term. I want to keep my term the same and just to subtract how many like terms I have. So my final answer is 3 halves. And that's a positive 3 halves, so I'm going to add 3 halves. 
So the equation of the line that is parallel to this line is y equals negative three-fourths x plus three-halves. To check that answer, I'm going to graph this line. Negative three-fourths is my slope, and my y-intercept is three-halves. So how do I graph three-halves on the y-axis? Well, three-halves is really 1.5. So on the y-axis, if this was a number line and I had to plot three halves, three halves would be one and a half. From there, I have a slope of negative three-fourths. So I'm going to go down three. But I'm right in the middle, so I can count middles. One, two, three, down, and one, two, three, four, to the right. To get a negative slope, I can also go up and to the left. Now I need to connect all of those points. A line is a collection of an infinite number of points, and all of these points, if I plug in the ordered pairs into this equation, I'd get a true statement. Now to check this answer, does this line go through six, negative three? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Does this line go through six, negative three? Yeah. Is it parallel to this line? Yes, they both have the same slopes. Our second problem, we're going to follow that same process. Step one, find the slope. In order to find the slope of this line, written in standard form, I need to solve for y. When I solve for y, I'm going to rewrite that equation in slope-intercept form, and I can easily see the slope of the line. When I divide by four, I'm really dividing negative x by four and 12 by four. This is really negative one x, and a negative one divided by four is negative one-fourth x plus three. So the slope of this line is negative one-fourth. And if I want to create a new line perpendicular to this line, the slope of my new line has to be the opposite reciprocal of negative one-fourth. The opposite reciprocal of negative one-fourth is going to be positive four over, four over one, or just positive four. So the slope of my new line is going to be four. Step two, find the y-intercept. I'm going to use my second method to solve for my y-intercept, where I start with my equation in slope-intercept form, and I plug in what I know. I know my slope has to be four. And I want my line to go through this point, negative four, negative eight. Well, this is really an x, y, input, output set of numbers. If I input negative four, my output has to be negative eight. So I'm going to input negative four for x, and my output is going to be negative eight. When I plug those numbers in, I can solve for b. So 
So I know that b has to be 8. I need to write the equation of my line. Slope of 4, y-intercept, 8. y equals 4x plus 8. Let's double check to make sure that this line goes through this point. My y-intercept is 4, or my y-intercept is 8. I'm going to count up 8. And from there I have a slope of positive 4. So if I try to count up 4, I run out of spaces. But I can get a positive slope by going down 4, and to the left 1. If I go negative down and negative to the left, a negative divided by a negative gives me a positive slope. So I'm going to go down 4 and to the left 1. And then connect those points. Does this line go through negative 4, 8? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Is it perpendicular to this line? Well, if we graph this line real quick, we can find out. Y-intercept of 3. Slope of negative 1 fourth. Our new line is perpendicular to our given line, and it goes through the point negative 4, negative 8. Graphing is a great way to check our answer.